a lot of success, all those things. Mm -hmm. Kind of went the other direction yeah. last year. How, what's the key for finding that consistency to get back to that? And what do you think is different now than say last year? Yeah, well, I mean, consistency in performance is, is is how you become successful, and that's the hardest thing to do, especially when you're building a program. And so, you know, quality depth is is important. Um, we didn't have that at an, in enough positions a year ago. So when we got guys banged up, we just weren't able to answer the bell at a winning level. So that's going to be important. So we we got to stay healthy. We've addressed the, we've addressed the depth, you know, through recruiting and player development. Um, that's key, and then you know we upgraded the coaching staff as well. So you know, I feel good about the team, um, but you know it remains to be seen. We got to go out and play the games, right? <clears throat> you talk about the depth a lot. Too. Is it fair to say two years ago maybe you guys you know caught some breaks, didn't have the injuries, even though maybe the depth wasn't quite there yet, and that it takes a little time right. to build that depth long term? I guess you know, we stay relatively healthy in, until uh, until I think like going into the Ohio State game. Um, we, you know, we got banged up, and then before the game, and then, and then, um, then, you know, after that game, we go to Purdue, and we're banged up like, you know, horse was out. We had, we had guys out, and and some guys, uh, you know, couldn't answer the bell. So we were able to finish strong enough. I, I, know, I don't know if you guys remember how, you know, we had a, we had like a flu deal going around the team going into the Penn State game, and and all that. But guys were able to rise to the occasion, and so you know, we were able to to get it done. Um, it takes it. It does take some time to build depth, um, and uh, you know through recruiting. You know, and if you, you know, after the the 2020 season, that COVID season, you know, we didn't have a player drafted, and that was the first time in I think 80 years that Michigan State didn't have a player drafted. So, uh, and that's at any position. You know, so that just kind of goes to show you like the state of you know, depth and talent in the program. And, you know, it takes some recruiting classes to get that done. And so, uh, you know, we recruited well, especially the past two classes. And, uh, you know, and some of those young guys that we recruited um, in that 22 class, they actually were playing last year. So it was painful on the job training, but, you know, they're bigger, stronger, faster now, and they have experience and they, and they look different. So much of that depth does have to do with the fact that, you know, you say you have like this talent that they have lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a reason. Recruiting is a big part of it, um, and you know we were able to address some issues of need uh, in this out of season. For example, um, you know we weren't uh, very big in the in the defensive line, um, and we didn't have a strong rotation. We had to play guys a lot more snaps than we really wanted to. Um, you know, we would go in the games and have a three defensive tackle rotation, which is not a, a winning formula for us. And we were able to go out in recruiting and add, you know, three, six, five, 300 plus defensive tackles that have all played major college football. Those guys added yeah. in the middle. Do you, to me, you envision him playing more outside now? He's an end. Yeah, he, he's an end. He came in at 280, um, and, and, that's, and that's good for us because. You know, especially in our conference, you have to be able to stop the run. You have to be really strong in the C and D area, the tight end area. Um, and we really got hurt in the perimeter run game. So, um, you know, he may be able to rush inside on, on passing downs, um, but, he, you know, he came here to be at the end, and that's where we're going to play him. Because he had mentioned in the spring, mm -hmm. possibly might be out floating between the two. Can you see mm -hmm. him using, kind of using a little bit of the speed back at the time? Yeah, that's, in, in obvious passing situations, you know, he could certainly create some mismatches inside. But on base downs, on, on rundowns, uh, you'll see him on the edge. With the quarterback and stuff, obviously, you're probably going to get asked that question about 50 times. Ah, uh, I've already been asked 50 times already. <laughs> this is like 51. Yeah. I guess, what are you looking for in those guys to separate? And, you know, is, do you expect to have a decision public for the old? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, a couple years ago, I don't think anyone knew who the starting quarterback was going to be going into that, that Northwestern game. So... Um, you know, it may be that. You know, we'll have to see. Um, you know, our quarterback has to be our number one competitor. You know, and we have three core values. You know, tough, discipline, and selfless. And so, uh, a, a quarterback has to be all three for us. And it's an open competition. I like the way the guys have approached it. Um, you know, we have very talented guys in that room. Um, it's a healthy competition, but we're going to play the best player. And uh, we don't know who that is at this point. 
You know, obviously Noah has more experience. He's been in the system longer. You saw when he went in games last year, he did make it look relatively easy um, versus the guys that he was playing against. And so, um, you know, but it's it's open. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We just need someone to go in there and do what we ask him to do. You know, lead and run the offense, uh, you know, take what the defense gives them. Uh, you know, if it's not there, hit the check down, run it, or knock a beer out of someone's hand in the, in the, in the stands, throw it away and go to the next play. I mean, uh, you know, we play, t you know, play complimentary football and don't try to do too much. Is it a different form camp when you're trying to find that <clears throat> position? Like, in other words, do you, you want to put stress on them in different ways to figure that out? Yeah, I mean, uh, the practices, you know, should be harder than the games. We try to create that. And when you have more competition on your roster, uh, the practices are more competitive. Um, and you just you, you get better a lot faster. Um, but I remember going into the 2015 season at, at Bama. I mean, we were repping three quarterbacks uh, there, and I don't think anybody knew who the quarterback was going to be. And then, you know, Jake Coker emerges, and, you know, we win a national championship. So, you know, I've, uh, same thing at Ohio State. I mean, who knew who Craig Krenzel was and before the 2002 season, you know? And so, uh, you know, players, you know, they, they emerge. And you know, if you have a good team around them, uh, that gives you the best chance. We're just not going to ask our quarterback to do too much. No, it's a three-guy race. Well, yeah, he didn't have the spring, so he's got to come in. He's got to learn what to do. You know, he's got to learn the offense. He's got to gain the trust of his teammates. He's got to be able to execute on a consistent on a consistent basis, better than the other two guys. Um, but I mean. You know, Sam was a very, very confident guy. He's got a lot. He's got some high goals, and you know, his he was he was clear in recruiting that he wanted to come in and play as a freshman, and that's his goal. And so, it's the open. Comp we told him that the competition was going to be open for all of those guys, and so you know, we'll see how it goes. We have 25 practices before the first game. Can you describe your receiving, your receivers that you have? Yep. Especially with the addition of Ralph. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a talented group. Um, with a mixture of veteran players and young guys. If you take a, you, you look at like Trey Mosley, he's a veteran guy that sometimes people overlook. Um, but, you know, if you think back to the games, every time you throw it his way, he catches it, and he's, he's a little bit faster than what, what people think. Um, you know, Alante, is a, he's, he's shown that he can be productive at this level. And then you look at guys like Tyrell Henry, uh, uh, you know, Antonio Gates, uh, Jaron Glover. Um, guys that are, you know, they all came in together, very, very talented guys, <clears throat> had really good spring. And then, um, you know, I think you can tend to forget about Montori Foster. He's been he's been banged up, especially last year. But uh, when he went in games, he was productive and he can make plays. He looked good this spring. He's the he's looked the best he's looked since I've been there, since he's been there. And um, and he's healthy. So, um, you know, Fitzpatrick had a good spring. So we have some we have some talented guys. Um, and we have uh, quite a few tight ends. We added like three tight ends to our roster. All those guys are receiving threats as well. And the tight end is a big part of our offense. We we don't we don't have in, we don't have a scheme where a tight end is not on the field. So um, we look at Malik Carr. We saw what he could do a year ago, and Tyneel Harper uh, Hopper coming in from uh, Boise, um, Jalen Franklin coming in from Wisconsin. Uh, Mola Filet coming in from Norfolk. He, he hit 6'7", 245. I mean, those are talented guys that, that had good springs that, that can help us in the passing game as well. So, um, I mean, we're not going to leave it up to one guy. You know, we're going to have to play complimentary football, and everybody's just going to have to do their job. I was back in the day. That was like 40 pounds ago. I kind of have the same identity since that class, that run game, play defense, kind of went that way. Moving to the air raid, what was kind of your reaction to seeing that um, I really don't have a reaction. I mean, it just you know remains to be seen. You know how it goes. I mean, uh, Wisconsin's always you know, and you know, we we were one in ten my freshman year, and and uh, and and then the four, year four we won the Rose Bowl, and they've had a it's been a really good program ever since. I don't see that changing. I mean, they, they have great coaching staff, and and. Uh, you know, Luke's going to do a great job. It's going to be hard-nosed football. Regardless of the scheme, it's going to be physical hard-nosed football, and that's and that's what Wisconsin's all about. No, I was redshirted that year. Yep. Had a broken leg. How do you know? Well, 
when I meet with the players individually, like over the summer, you know, these individual, you know, 15 minute meetings, I ask them about about that, and they and they and they all tell me that it's better. We've made a conscious effort to uh, to schedule events for the players um, so that they could connect more, and then they've also done things on their own, which is even more important. And so, uh, you know, you can, you know, if you, this is year 27 for me coaching, and so. Uh, you can tell when players like being around each other and also uh, when you build mutual trust on a team then um, you see guys holding each other accountable more often in a productive way and that that's happening because we're with these guys in the summer you know through the spring and in the summer there's an eight week summer program summer access we have with these guys where these guys are running lifting you know, we can meet with them, coaches are meeting with them, and, and we can do certain drills with those guys. And so it's not like we don't see them. You know, we've, we've been with these guys, um, you know, since the season ended for the most part. There you are. Well, how was lunch? Not fast enough. <laughs> It is. I mean, connection and building trust and getting to know guys, you know, off the field uh, is important. They have to get. They have to get to know each other. In order to coach the guys the way we need to coach them, they have to. We have to have. They have to trust us because we need to be able to push them beyond where they think that they can go. Um, you know, every day to get them better. Um, and if you don't have a connection, you don't have trust. It's, it's hard to get that. It's hard to get that done. So um, we have to be very intentional about, you know, connecting. We brought in. We we use an outside firm called the Program. Um, we've started with these guys in in January, and every Wednesday in the summer, they've come in. Uh, I think maybe for seven weeks they came in and worked with the new guys, the guys who had just gotten there, um, just arrived on campus, like in June. To get them up to speed on our culture, you know how we do things, working with leadership and things like that with some of the guys who have been here, and so that's been productive. That's the first time we've done that, so we put a lot of effort into um, team cohesiveness and team chemistry. So, outside expectations, mm -hmm. those matter internally. In other words, mm -hmm. you know, a year ago, everybody around, you know, there's a swagger, there's a and then when those aren't, does it does that matter internally, or is that all all outside? Does that make it easier to coach a team when those are gone, or are they? Or? It, it, I think it might matter to some of the guys on the team. Maybe some of the younger players who don't have as much experience and don't and don't quite understand. Um, but outside of that, other than those guys, I don't think it really matters because uh, anyone that knows me knows that I have a high expectation for for the program. It was that way when I walked in the door, you know, for. You know, winning games and recruiting. You know, I came in talking about competing for championships, going out and recruiting nationally, and 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 going out and getting the best players, and and beating, you know, competing for the best players and signing the best players. And I don't think anybody thought that I w that that was going to happen, and it is happening. So there's no one has a higher expectation than me, and that's communicated to our coaching staff and to our team. So what anyone says outside of program is really irrelevant. You know, for me and for the staff, but you know, obviously, you know, it can affect some guys who really just don't have the experience to understand how to handle it. Can you point to 2021 for your guys? What's that? Can you point to the 2021 season along those lines because the expectations were about where they're at now. And you off <laughs> yeah, you, you you can, you know, but you know what I like, what 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 I prefer to do is is really uh, look at last year's team and really look at that team as a team that's going to lay the foundation for the program. Because I think, you know, oftentimes you have to get kicked in the face before you can be great. You know, and so, um, you know, we have a chip on our shoulder. No one was happy with the way the season uh, unfolded, um, especially there, you know, the last couple of games. It was very disappointing. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're just, we're just hungry. I and mean, the coaching staff is, I mean, there's no, there's no sense of entitlement in our building, um, and uh, and I said it. I mean, I said it two years ago. I, you know, we won 11 and two, but like we, 
I said we haven't really done anything. We didn't we didn't win a championship, you know. Um, you know we didn't win them all. Um, you know we it, it was it was a step in the right direction, but we hadn't arrived, and so we feel the same way now. Well, last year was you know, about laying the foundation. Mm -hmm. What is this year about? Yeah, it's it's about um, winning football games. You know that's what that's that's our goal. That's why we're here. And, I mean that's that's our goal. And we don't ha we don't have a theme for our, for this season. We, we don't have a, like any slogans or anything for this season. It's, it's basically we got to play to the best of our potential. We got to get get it out of our guys. The best that whatever we can do, whatever we're capable of doing, we have to get it out on the field. We got to coach it. And we got to coach through it and get it out of them. And the players they have to you know get to the point where they can fall back on their habits and not try to just rise to the occasion. You got an update on Darius? I know you're not like talking about it. Do you expect him to be? He'll be ready when he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Is he closer though to? I mean, doing. You know, these Darius had a long term. To... Yeah, he had a long term rehab, right? So he had a significant injury, and he's been battling. Uh, I mean, you guys know him. I mean, he's he's a sharp kid. He's very determined. He loves football. And he's been battling hard to get back, um, and it's it's going to take a while. But you know, hopefully, you know, we'll get a chance to see him do more when in fall camp, and then we'll we'll assess him at that point. Do you or can you expect him back this year? No, I don't have an expectation yet. Like I said, we have to wait until camp starts to see where he is. Um, you know, injuries. You know, sometimes you know they're just you know day to day. Guys come back sometimes sooner than you expect. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, but I know this. I mean, if anyone can make it back, it's him. I'll be, I'll be right with you. Sammy? Yeah, Dale, yeah, Jalen Sammy. Yeah, he is a big body. What did you hear and see from him so far? The guy that you coached him? I did. He was a red. I he was a red shirt freshman uh, when he he started for us my uh, season at at, uh, at Colorado. He actually. He actually helped us win the, the Washington game. He he was uh, that's back when we were had a three man shield punt team. So we had the big lineman and the shield in front of the punter, and the punt returner broke through and he made an open field tackle at six five, three hundred some pounds on the skill guy. I don't know how he got this guy on the ground, but it was like oh my god, if that guy if he hadn't made that tackle, we lose that game. I mean like so so that's why he's here. That's, <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's a he's a he's a good player. He's a he's a he's a big body. And he's athletic. He's a he's and he's a great he's a great guy. We were happy. We, I mean, we when he hit the portal. I mean, we were all. I mean, there were we were there was literally there was some running in the hallway. Guys were there was a, were running, trying to get it done. When you opened the quarterback competition in mm -hmm. spring, did you prepare for the possibility that he would transfer? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we um, in the past, you know. You know, we would have like four, we would have three quarterbacks on scholarship typically, and then the rest, you know, walk-on players. Um, we decided that we wanted to, that we needed to have four. You know, in recent years, have four scholarship guys um, because what you see in college football is you see guys go through spring and they kind of they start they make decisions after spring if they if they want to stay or, or not. And so we, you know, you anticipate possibly one guy leaving. Um, you're not maybe knowing who. And still having three good players remaining, and that's that was our situation. So we were prepared. Now there's reports that the Michigan game was your only night game prime time. Is that is that is that concrete? Is that it is? Yeah. That's what's yeah. Yep. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. Uh, how, would you, uh, how would you describe the overall state of that rivalry? I guess what would you say to people who felt like maybe it needed to be reined in somehow after last season? What do you mean reined in? Like maybe it crossed the line. Maybe yeah. How do you rein it in? I don't know. Can you? Is there anything? I don't know how you do that. So you'll There's not a day that's gone by that I haven't heard something about that game. I mean, every day of my life I hear about that game. So I don't know how you rein that in. It just is what it is. So you take so you'll, a year, you'll, take it a year off then the way to go with that? Or no. No. That's never going to happen. That's not even a reality. So why would, why would we want to do that? Of course. Yeah, I mean, that's what's great about college football. I mean, I'm, I've been a part of, we talked about it before. I mean, when you, you know, coaching, you know, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, you know, Chicago, Green Bay, 
uh, Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Florida, Colorado, Nebraska. I mean, those are big games. I mean, that's why that's why we coach. That's why we play to, to be in those games and and to ultimately win those games. And you're and you're oftentimes you're judged by how you do in those games. So I think it's great. I mean, you know, we we don't. I mean, from the day I got here in my initial press conference, I, I'm not stepping away. I'm not shying away from the from the challenge of the rivalry. It's the biggest game of the year for us, and it's always going to be like that as long as I'm the coach here. One to ask you about the, the kicking and punting situations. Those are obviously yeah. two important divisions you saw last year. The kicker and yeah. the barrier. I guess mm-hmm. kind of assess where they're at right now. Yeah. So you know, Eck and O'Shaughnessy will compete. Um, you know, we got Jonathan Kim and Rusnick competing for the kicking duties, and then you know we got Hank back. You don't know it's a long snapper until you don't until you don't have one, right? And so uh, you know Hank uh, bat- has battled back, and he's healthy now. And uh, and then you know we're going to have competition for his backup, um, and he's a good player. I mean we had we had a kid in here uh, that that uh, came here to compete with Hank, and after spring ball he decided to hit the portal. You know so um, you know we want to make sure that we have you know at least two. You know, really good options at each position so those guys compete and we can put the best kids on the field. It's important. 100 years of Spartan Stadium is well. yeah. what makes that place special? What's your favorite moment from the side that's so fun? So my favorite moment was two years ago when I saw Ken Walker score five touchdowns against school down the road in front of me. It was a that was a madhouse. We had Fox Big Noon was there, uh, ESPN Game Day was there, uh, I mean uh, Barstool was there. I mean, it was uh, we're down 16 and a half. I mean, you know, there's people. I mean, by the time the game was over, people were falling out of the rafters. I mean, that's that's the woodshed. That's what I remember, and that's what makes it great. I mean, that's a, we have great fans, and there's high expectations, and it can uh, it can get hostile in there, and that's what we want it. Excuse me. I, I would think so. We'll see. Yeah, he's got a really good skill set. He can run. He's fast, and we need to be able to match up. He's really good in. Uh, He's a good tackler. He's good. He's a tough kid. He's good in good in uh, man coverage, and uh, you know he's a veteran guy. And we have we have a lot of young guys in our secondary too. So, um, you know, Marion Smith and and uh, bringing in uh, uh, bringing in uh, Samar Samar Melvin, you know, along with him. I mean, those are three veteran guys that have played like a lot of football to go with our young guys. So. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a he's a good special teams guy. All our guys need that. Our starters, if if you are a starter, you should be on at least one special team, you know. And it helps with with your NFL value as well. So, what you said last, last year? year about when you guys use more four three downs, especially with the linebackers you bring back, is there ways you can integrate that more this year? With the you just have to match personnel. And when you go, when we use four three, it's because you know. They they have big, the offense has bigger personnel on the field, you know, uh, maybe less receivers, you know, and uh, and it's it's hard to play four or three against teams that have you know have multiple wide receivers on the field. It's hard to match up. And it's hard to play man coverage. You know, it's hard to disguise when you you know when you have linebackers that have to walk out of the box, you know, and and uh, it's just not it's just not real good for disguising for matching up. So. We have the ability to match personnel. It depends on who's on your schedule. You know, we go through the schedule. We look at the the uh, profiles of the coordinators, and we'll say, hey, there's going to be three games this year where we're going to be a lot of four three, you know, and the rest we're going to be you know four two five or whatever. So it's, it's based upon who you're playing. You said this year's about eight games. So what's what's your measure of success? What's your measure of failure? In that we just want to reach our full potential, and our goal is to win every game on our schedule, and then at the end we'll just add it up. You know, but we're not out here just coaching. The, you know, we're not just practicing coaching, and we're not just here, just out here, just you know, just to play and and roll our helmets out there. I mean, obviously, the goal is to win the game. I don't know why we should apologize for that being the goal. That's everybody else's goal out here. Why can't it be ours? With the new TV deal, how is it going to help your team? How is it going to help the league? We'll see. I mean, it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a lot of resources, you know. But uh, you know, that's really not my focus. You know, we know that the, the, the league is competitive now. The Big Ten is in a really good position. And it's going to get even more competitive. And in, in recruiting, um, when you're, we're talking to players, you know, that does come up. And the best players want to play against the best competition. Uh, they want to get the best tape uh, 
for the NFL when they want to play on huge stages. And I don't know if you can get a bigger stage. When you really look at the numbers uh, of viewership in the Big Ten, um, the, the real numbers, the actual numbers, you compare them to the SEC, I think you'd be surprised. What stands out to you about Cal Powell? The body man, John Wick. You see, he's old school. He's extremely old school. I mean, like you talk about 100 years, 100 years ago, he would have fit in just, I mean, the guy has, he wears nothing on his arms, no wristbands, no tape, no towel. I mean, uh, he's as, as basic as it, as it gets. He doesn't really talk that much. He just, it's like see ball, get ball. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a Michigan State linebacker, old school. I mean, he could have played, he could play in any era. He could play in that era where, like, you could tackle a guy and the four of progress, you, he, he could get up and still run. Like, you had to stop the four of progress. The guy had to give up before they blow the whistle. He could have played in that era. I love that guy. I don't know if I'm big time, but I, I, do, I do enjoy the sweet science. I got to go with Bud. I, I mean, I, I got to go with Bud. That's going to be a good fight. Uh, you see the monster fought yesterday morning at like at 8 o'clock. Do you see that knockout? He hit him. He, he set him up with a jab to the body, then hit him with a straight right. I think he broke his jaw. That's a long ride home from Japan, bro. <laughs> you go with two belts, you got to come home. We got no belts. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I got to go with Bud. It's going to be a good. I would I have loved to be out there for that, but obviously I got work to do. Yeah. Hey, Ma, how do you evaluate your NIL program as it pertains to other programs? Like, how do you how do you compare them? I don't know. How do you do that? I don't know. That's my message. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 tough because you don't know what the numbers are. No one really knows exactly what players are getting offered or what they're getting from these other places or how much they're actually spending. You know, it's really it's not public information. How do you really know what the truth is? You know. And so uh, we're in, you know, we're active in this space. Obviously, we have support from our donors, and um, so we're in position to be, to be in it. As you see, we're in it with a lot of good players, uh, and it's coast to coast. I mean, so it's interesting. Uh, you know, we could be in it from a, a kid from California that you know decides to go to a top uh, Pac-12 Pac-12 school, and, and our fans are disappointed. I think that's a good thing. You know, when 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 we're in it with those guys, and we're we're starting to get our fair share of those guys. Not, not to lead you, but shouldn't there be a way for everyone to know for sure what everyone? Does? I don't. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, it's just because, you know, like, I don't think anybody cares what I think, like the decision makers, right? So I can, I can, I can get up here and talk about NIL and the portal and what it should be, but does it really matter? It's like, okay, this is what it is, and now how do we maneuver and how do we put ourselves in the best position to get players and win games? Because I don't waste a lot of time. You know, doing that because I just don't think anybody's listening to me. You've been through to the next level yeah. uh, with guys and contract negotiations. That, you know, you feel like this cycle in particular, mm -hmm. guys are starting to use the portal, use the media transfer, use all those things in NIL to their advantage with mm -hmm. what they're doing. Everyone's using the portal. It's not just football and basketball. All sports are doing it, and they've been doing it. You know, other sports have they they they've been building uh, rosters like well, with with more, transfers. Yeah, well, you know, it, each school is different because, you know, how many NIL dollars do you have? You know, how, you know, it's, it's, you know, it can easily become the have and the have-nots, even more so than it was before. Um, but, you know, there is, um, you know, there is a kind of an NFL-type element to it because, you know, obviously you don't have an, you have a finite amount of money, um, and uh, and you know, so. You know, how do you put values on players, you know, and then, you know, as you go into the portal, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit more to get someone out of the portal than it does out of high school ranks. Sometimes it just depends on who that player is and what your needs are and how many guys are out there on the market available at that position. You know, so it is very similar to the NFL, um, but there's a lot less rules, a lot less regulation and a lot less uh, parity. I mean, there's no there's no salary cap. Yeah, it seems like they're using leverage, they're using all those things. Yeah. Because there's no contract. Yeah. So yeah, why wouldn't they? I mean, it's very treacherous out there. I mean, it's it's a different ball game. It's not the same job that 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 I took in in February 12, 2020. It's it's totally different, and it's 
I mean, uh, just um, uh, just imagine if the NFL was like this. And I'm not saying that it's not to this extreme, but say you dra say say Detroit drafted a guy in the first round, and they gave him a signing bonus, and he played for him. And after his rookie year, he declared himself a free agent. How would you think? How do you think that league would work? You know, so no, there you go. A little along those lines, you say nothing really surprises you. Mm -hmm. How that all played out? Was there at least a little surprise or disorder? How did you kind of process? I wasn't surprised at all. I really wasn't. I wasn't surprised. Just um, because of the player he is, or just the, the environment? That you're in? Just the environment. I mean, you know, that, that was I probably that was probably like the first time that Michigan State and our fans have really experienced like the portal in that way. Like, wow, this what what happened? What's going on? But that's been like. How do how do these other schools feel when we get players and we get good players out of the portal? We've gotten good players out of the portal. I mean, it's it's that's that's college football. That's college basketball. That's how it is. I mean, guys are coming and going, and they're doing what's best for them. And all you can do is wish them the best. You know, that's all. You, that's all you can do because I mean, it works both ways. You know, and so uh, you know, I wish them the best. The guys are trying. To, guys are trying to make their way. They're trying to put themselves in what they think is the best position for them to be successful. They get to the next level so they can take care of their families. That's all they talk about, you know. So, you know, we'll just see how it goes. When the uh, Northwestern news came out, when you're a head coach of a program, do you have an immediate sort of going on? Let me double check, sort of. The, no. The season, or were you pretty comfortable with what was going on? Yeah, we have a hazing policy, like I talked about earlier, and and it, it wasn't like you have to double check. I mean, we, we see our guys all the time, right? And we're, you know, we have, we, have a, we have a large staff and we got the 10 countable coaches, but you know, we have the GAs, the analysts, the quality control guys, you know, you got the Darian Harris of the world, the, the operation people, you got the equipment people, you know, you got the, the nutrition people, you got the trainers, you got the strength staff. I mean, we're surrounding these guys. So we, we know who we have on our team, what's going on with our players. The idea that you want is almost Excuse me? The idea that some, a head coach wouldn't know what's going on is almost beyond the pale to you or no? Yeah, I mean, it, it's what I'm saying is with our team, yeah. you know, we we have a close-knit team. And, you know, so and we, we have an anti-hazing policy, and this is laid out to the players. When we have our team meeting on Wednesday to start camp, we're going to hit it again, you know, and we're going to emphasize it. And, and so we're going to communicate it. Um, I just think that makes too much sense, you know. Totally different topic. The division's going away, and I know that's a year from now. Do you like that for, for the Big Ten? Do you like the more? Or do you, do you, do you miss the the East, so to speak? I'm not. I'm not going to be a sentimental guy in, in that regard. I mean, it's, 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 we're still going to have a tough schedule, yeah, right. you know. But I'm, I'm not going to be wishing that it was, that, you know, that we could go back uh, to that. Uh, I'm not going to try to hold on to that. Yeah. Uh -huh. It depends on it depends on what our needs are. I haven't I haven't told the coaching staff, hey, we need this percentage of high school guys, this percentage of transfers. We're in a win now culture, okay, and so we have to do what we have to do every year to build a team, put the best team out there we can, to fill the needs that we can. We have to, we have to be able to do that and, and build a winning culture along the way. You know, and that's, it's, a, it's a challenge. You know, but we, we, we came in the door playing catch up. You know, we, were, we, we were playing catch up. You know, I was, when, I was t when, I was, when, when, this, when this opportunity came up, I had, I had several, several people tell me, do not take that job. You go into the conference eight or ninth walking in the door you have no facilities, okay? So we know that there's challenges and we know it takes time to build a program and get the way we want it. And, you know, the portal is part of it, you know? And what, you know, from year to year, how many guys we get out of high school, how many guys we get out of the portal, you know, it remains to be seen, but we start in the high school ranks. How do you know when you've caught up? What's that? How do you know when you've caught up? Well, you know, when you're, when you're competing, when you're, when you're winning the games you're supposed to win, okay, and you're competing and winning games, uh, with the best teams in the conference, and and you can do that on a consistent basis. Then at that point, you can say, you know, that you know that the program is consistently at this level. We'll see. You ask me in about a year. <laughs> Last year, you were here. You said uh, pass defense couldn't get any worse, and then yeah. you know, only two interceptions. Obviously, yeah. couldn't go that way. With, with That's why I hired Jimmy Salgado. <laughs> I made it worse.
with all with the, all the youth in there, I guess, what's your outlook for the position, you know, given the veteran losses like Xavier, Cabell, and the new, and Ronald, and all that? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're athletic, we're young, we're bigger, we're longer. Um, we've recruited well. Um, we've brought in a lot of a lot of players in those positions, um, and uh, and we've upgraded the front seven, and we we've signed quite a few pass rushers. Um, so you know, and we've developed some pass rushers. That's going to help. I mean, uh, you know, rush and coverage, you know, work together, um, and so uh, you know we have to you know we we have to play really good on defense to have a chance to win games this year. And so I'm expecting that the, the, those guys to play better. Um, but, you know, we, we had a lot of guys that got a lot of experience last year. Some on-the-job training is going to pay off for us this season. Coach, is this going to be the most competition in the running back room? I would say so. I mean, you look at it, you know, Jordan Simmons is still there. He's been playing since he was a freshman. Uh, Davion Prim is still there. You know, he's he's shown flashes like in, in spring. Um, and uh, and Berger, you know, with his second year with us, is still there. And then you add Mangum, Barberin, and um, and uh, and Nathan Carter. Those are all good players. I mean, Mangum six three two thirty five walking in the door. You know, Barberin ran a ten three hundred meters as a junior in high school. You know, Nathan Carter is has played power five football and has been very productive. And I mean, he established himself as a dude immediately in the weight room, you know, similar to what Ken Walker did. So, yeah, it's super competitive in, in there. Uh, guys are going to have to compete to get on the field. They're going to have to compete for spots on special teams. In trying to keep guys healthy. What's your name? My name is Wilson. Wilson, okay. I don't okay. cover you, I'm sorry. Okay, um, yeah, all right. Um, in, you mentioned up there, you know, changing uh, practice to try to keep guys healthier. Yeah. Training. What's, like, the process of, you know, conceiving that and implementing that and coming up with yeah, so um, just, you know, NFL experience. I have a lot of coaches on our staff that coach in the, in the NFL. Our strength coach was like 11 years in the league. My new D-line coach was 11 years in the league. I had 10 years in the league. You know, we had guys that played in the league and coached in the league. So, you know, in, in the NFL, you know, you, you only got 53 guys plus the practice squad guys. You can't afford to get guys hurt. You know, you just, you just can't do it. I mean, you get a couple guys hurt depending on what position, your season's over. You, you, there's there's no there's there's no one there. You go into the street to get guys, and so you know sometimes in the NFL you'll you'll practice you know like more than half the season just with no pads. You only hit on game day. It takes a certain amount of maturity to practice that way. Guys got to know what they're doing. You ha have to have experience. Um, but you know we're in that situation where we can't afford to lose guys. So you know we use you know some of our NFL um, experience to be able to taper and modify the practices so we could get the players better, so we could get the work in that we needed, but keep them healthy and keep them off the ground. Like the days of just banging, 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 it would just, you know, I think they're, you know, I, I, I don't think we can ever, we can ever go back to that, you know, and, and I thought we were doing a, a, a really good job taking care of our players, but obviously we had to make some changes. I think we had 28 starters on defense uh, last year and like 43 different starters as a team. That was like fifth most in the in the country. And that is, that is that's not going to get it done. So we had to make some changes. Um, this is very different than the rest of question but by the mm -hmm. way I'm with the Indiana University the station. But based on after that game against Indiana last year, in early anticipation of that game this year, are your thoughts about Indiana coming into this season? It, you know, that game's a long ways away for me. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, it's not something that's really I'm really thinking about right now because, like, we start camp and we report on Wednesday, and you know we're we're focusing on our 25 practices in our first game, and so um, I mean Tom's gonna have his team ready. They always play hard. It's always a physical game, um, and it's uh, I mean it's it's gonna be a battle. I mean I know that much. So. Hey Mel, from uh, question yeah. about the cover of Ohio State. Um, and you guys have faced a lot of good receivers in mm -hmm. the last couple years. I was wondering, from your perspective, what makes Marvin Harrison you know, kind of unique? And yeah. From a matchup. Yeah, he's 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 fast. He's got good size. He has excellent hands. I mean, even 
like if you go back to our game last year and you look at some of the plays that he made, you know, those guys were draped all over him and he came down with the ball and he made it look easy and he does that on a consistent basis. And there's not very many guys in the country who can do that all the time. You know, so um, I mean he he's got really good route running ability. He plays with toughness. You know, I mean everything that you're looking for in a receiver, um, you know, he, he has that. So I mean, he he might be the best receiver in the country. I, and I, don't, I haven't seen all of them, but I mean, there's not too many better than him. I can guarantee you that. Is his route running unique for somebody that for him with his size? I say maybe for that experience, you know. Um, and uh, I mean, he's 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 got really good size, but I think from his you know his his age and the precision, the way he runs his routes, and and they and you know. Brian does a great job coaching those guys. Like Brian played for us when I was at Ohio State, and those guys do a really good job coming back to the ball. I mean, they they attack the ball coming back downhill, and it puts a lot of pressure on the defense, um, and it protects the quarterback. So, um, yeah, I think they're just really well coached. And they and if you see, you know, in their recruiting, I mean, it's five star after five star after five star every year, year in and year out. Those guys come in, they develop them, they put them out there. Those are NFL players. Talk next of your long-term goals. Do you mm -hmm. see this year as a swing year, especially as far as regaining momentum and kind of? I don't. I don't see it as a swing year. I see it as this is the next year. This is a fresh year, and we're going to attack it. You know, I don't. I don't see it as anything other than that. You guys still going to be shuffling players back to the locker room? Are you guys uh, with the go karts and the buses? Or are you guys actually? Getting, we had the go karts. We had the buses, and we had the bikes. You remember? We yeah, had the, we had the bikes. We donated those bikes. Yeah. Uh, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. We'll be in a new locker room next week, in, which is huge. Um, our guys will spend, um, you know, an hour, two hours. Cause we're a morning practice team. They will stay in the in the locker room like well after practice was over. Um, you know, just hanging out with each other. You know, and so that kind of went away when our when you know, and then we and we had to do it. You know, but our stadium was our, our locker our locker room. The players' locker room was was in the stadium. They used the game day locker room, and you know there was you know we had buses running and then bikes and scooters and things like that, and guys really didn't hang out over there, and so it's going to be a much better situation for us. And and you know my experience has been also is that you know like um, you don't want to go into your game day locker room every day, you know because you know you get 12 guaranteed opportunities, you only get so many home games, and so going into your Going into your home locker room should feel different, you know, than any other time in, in the season, any, time, any, any other time of the year, any other time during the week. And uh, so when you're in there every day, I think it takes a little bit, you know, away from that special feeling you get. We're going to get that back this season. Okay. You know, what, the, the, the roster is getting update, the heights and weight more, but with the offensive line, what did you see from those guys in the weight room? Um, size, and you feel like they yeah, our that's that's an interesting question. Our facilities guy took me through the, the the new building yesterday, and I don't know how we got on this topic. And he said, "Man, these guys are much bigger than they were two, three years ago." He was talking about the line. He said they're they're he said they're averaging they're like three inches taller than the guys they were in the past. And so we've made a point to get bigger, you know, on especially in the trenches, and, and so. Uh, I mean, football is there's is for you know there's a there's a game for big people you know, and you know in the trenches you got to think about this you have to move a, a, a man against his will a guy wants to go here you can say no you're not going you got to go there well you need big strong physical guys to get that done and so uh, you know we've recruited that way um, you know and Jason Novak does a really good job in the weight room uh, our nutrition program has grown. When I arrived in East Lansing, we did not have we did not have a, a dedicated dietitian for football, and we virtually had no nutrition program. And now we have that, and so you know, years and off seasons, out of seasons in the weight room with guys, um, and recruiting guys with bigger frames with more uh, size potential is starting to pay off for us. And uh, I think when you look out there in pregame uh, this season, when we, we play Central, you look on the field, and you look at the, those lines. I, I think you'll see. I think you'll see that these guys are they just just have more big bodies, and that's that's going to help us a lot.
All right. Nick, last one here for Coach. What's, what's the best model for this sport going forward when it comes to roster construction? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's hard. Would, would, you, would you be in favor of if players signed multi-year agreements or if there was a rev share component, if, if that gave coaches more certainty over what the roster looks like? What's, what's your perspective on the best way to move forward? I, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, that, that's so complicated, um, and I haven't really focused on, on that. Um, again, it's... Uh, this is a new landscape for a lot of people, and everybody's trying to figure it out. And I don't know if anybody has the answer, and I certainly don't. You know, we're just trying to navigate best we can within the structure that we have right now. Appreciate that. Yep. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.